Hey guys, if you haven't figured it out, I'm not in Virginia. Actually, I'm in Charleston, South Carolina, or just a little bit north, at Boone Hall Plantation. Boone Hall was one of the plantations that survived the Civil War. And uh, I thought while we was here, you know, the Civil War was often referred to as the War of the Northern Aggression, of Northern Aggression. And having met some of you fellers, well, so, geezer, so you fellas never seen where cotton comes from? Here it is. They got a little cotton patch out here just so you can see how it grew. You're not allowed to touch it. Is there a sign that says that? There is a sign right there next to us. They don't have the signs close enough. And, and, and look at the holes when they see this, the, the burrs. And can you imagine the slaves out here day in, day out, in 100 degree heat, picking this stuff? Well, I'm grateful for cotton sheets. You're grateful for cotton sheets? Yes, yes. sir. Well, this is the first time Miss Crystal has ever been to a southern plantation. Besides just the ones in Virginia. I've done field trips with the kids. So. Yeah. The but this one is exciting because... It's, it was the main house in North and South. The movie? Sort of, yeah. Uh, part of Gone with the Wind was filmed here. Been numerous movies filmed here. So I'm excited because I'm a huge North and South addict. Okay. And if you guys have never seen the movie North and South, I highly suggest you watch it. It's something you would, you would enjoy. Um, even it, even if it's just to look at the furniture in the background. Exactly. Hey, that was coming out of my mouth. I mean, oh, look, I there's don't know a how sign. many of you guys, you watching a movie and it's something historical, and, and you're sitting there at the TV trying to, you know, because you want to see the furniture in the background. Or okay. the double diamond canopies on the beds. Yeah. And now, we're kind of off to the side, but we'll go around and show you a little bit of it. Okay, guys, this is outside of one of the slave quarters. Uh, of particular interest, pay attention to the roof. These slate tiles. Or actually, they're, they're fired tiles. They were made from clay. I know a little bit about this. As many of you know, I lived in South Carolina many years in Charleston. And when Hurricane Hugo hit, I think it was 89, some of the roofs in the downtown area that were just like this, some of the tiles had to be replaced. And so I learned a little bit about the history of them. They were formed over the thighs of slaves. And I suspect many of these tiles are original. The brick and all would be in the mortar. And you see the seashells and the coarse sand in the mortar. But this is how it would be. Let's walk inside real quick. Got something to show you. Now, I remember Roy talking about using the cut nails and how the notes, the grain on the side of the cradle is running opposing the front and it's nailed. And I feel sure that's just a repro. It obviously is. But that's the way they built them. And they, they endured and lasted. The other thing is almost all the wood that you'll find here around here is southern yellow pine. It endured and, and held up good. But the other one, I just want you guys to pay attention. You see right here, this is an old dough bowl. This would have been hewed out that's very likely an original one. It was hewed out it was either yellow pine or popper, and it's what they used to make to mix by hand the dough. Same thing with the old bowl over here. I was looking at their ladles and spoons here by the fireplace. They're gourds. The whole of that gourd. Yep. But if you look around, I don't think that 
I don't think that PVC conduit is original to the building, though. Hmm. No, that's so they have the little lights up on the ceiling. I know. But, but there is a loft up there. I hadn't noticed in the other ones. The well, ladder I, I think that's just to get up there and put the lights and stuff up, because that wouldn't have been there in the period. But if you notice, notice the, the way all the roof joists and, and rafters and everything's notched in to the top plate and whatever. Typically the insides would have been covered with a plaster of sorts and then whitewashed. The whitewash was made out of lime. Uh, and I can't remember what else. Starch of some kind as a binder. I forget exactly now. All right, ready to move on? Yep. Well, guys, this is one of the million dollar shots. This is the one you see. Now, these big arbors that you see, this much I know, when the movie Gone with the Wind was filmed. Not Gone with the Wind. Not Gone with the Wind, North and South. North and South. Those were brought in and they were up here and they were used in some wedding in the movie. So those were not original to the plantation. If we can walk forward, If you can look down this fence road, it's like a... It's, it's, it zigzags. It curves yeah. back and forth. Well, it's curved. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty neat. And then, we got a truck going down it. <laughs> then comes the number one million dollar shot. And we'll get another of it. It's the Avenue of Oaks. Yeah. Let's walk out real quick. Give you guys a perspective of how big these trees are. I'm six foot tall and 250 pounds. 200 and what? So, man, oh man, oh man. If, if, if you could just, if these trees could talk, can you imagine? And of course, the good old Spanish mom. Right. Oh, In reality, the garden. And the oaks and but see, this house here wasn't even around in the Civil War era. No, that's what got me. Okay guys, from Boone Hall to Mary Mays, we made it. Everybody's met Mary, and if you remember last year, we was down and we brought the post. And <laughs> now we're back to finish them up, pick them up. Mary, this is just gorgeous. Oh, thank you. Now one of the things, first thing I see, yeah. one of my biggest complaints with carvers is they can do a background, but they don't. They rarely get them nice. <laughs> so I'm thinking to myself, okay, this is going to take a lot of little tedious scraping and whatever to finish them out. Tedious is the word. But you've got it. <laughs> well, now I got to ask a question. Yeah. Is that off the chisel or did you scrape it? I didn't scrape it. No. What? It's interesting because you've got a curved surface there. You can use a flat chisel to get that flat and a lot of time <laughs> and a lot of patience and what's interesting about the rice bed is you know when you have four legs to carve of something anything usually what happens is as you go on it gets faster because you know you either get the trick or you you know get get efficient get the with it and you know get that doesn't happen with this at all yeah. <laughs> because every little cut if you look at every single little detail right there is one that's right. So it was really So Mary, what was the hardest part of these? Oh my goodness. Um <laughs> patience. Yeah. Yeah. Uh I and that's very difficult to say because every little part of it had its own challenges. Um it you know what? It was what was required of this whole thing is really good control. Because okay? everything had to be Oh yeah, I'm, I mean look at this. I'm, I mean 
And you're dealing with a soft mahogany, and I mean one. Oh, but level. that was beautiful, beautiful mahogany. And you did a wonderful job turning it. <laughs> now let me ask a question, because I know you just did another one. Yes. And it's a bigger post. We downsized this to fit in a modern house. But the one you did, you said was what, four something? Yeah, four and a half inches. Yeah. And it was one piece. Oh, yeah. Which well, was easy. Well, first of all, I have a small shop. Well, I understand that. <laughs> so that was probably one of the most biggest challenges. I was actually working on it on my relatively short workbench and have, I don't know exactly how long it was, eight foot column basically mm -hmm. um, so I couldn't open the door when I was working <laughs> so it was <laughs> it was a challenge um, but um, also what is segmenting it what was what was interesting you segmented <coughs> it at certain points where it really made my job a lot easier because um, otherwise I would have to protect this area That's certain what, very very delicate thinking. area if yeah. you're looking at that little skinny collar there yeah. and you're thinking You've got to cut this little fine vein in here. Mm -hmm. Is that called a vein? Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> and so you're going to have to stop yeah. on every one of them perfectly mm -hmm. and try to keep that going straight in or you lose the detail. Exactly. And I'm like, you know what? If you can exit that, if you can just mm -hmm. exit off the end just of it, right off. it oh, makes life a whole lot simpler. And there were times when I had to take, I actually took painter's tape around on the other bed that was all one piece, put tape, three or four layers of tape, so that just, it would protect that. Um, and it was, uh, but then at the same time, you couldn't really complete that cut right. because that tape was there. So. Okay guys, we got to get back and do the bottom, well we've got them, mm -hmm. do the bottom of it, and it's it's shaped, we don't have, the only carving on it's a lamb's tongue, I think I can handle that. I can uh, you know, travel up there and help you with it. Okay, <laughs> I think I can handle a lamb I'm stone. sure you could. <laughs> and so, then we have a bed. So, and we've got some inlay to do on it and stuff on the bottom. So, but then, then we have to do the finish magic. And the finish on this is what's going to really accent the, the detail that Mary has carved into this, which is just absolutely magnificent. I couldn't be happy. I couldn't be happy. It's been an incredible project and uh, very enjoyable, the whole process of it. Is really now, you've got lessons on your website on yes. Mary May Carving every of the Charleston, part. every part every of the part Charleston of Rice Bed. Yes. Okay, so now if you guys want to see it, you've got to go to Mary May. It's MaryMayCarving.com. Okay. And then forward slash carving school. And over the next little while, we'll be adding them. Okay. But um, so far, we have the rice part of it on there. So we'll and, be adding and, them. And sign up and watch this. Uh, some point, I don't know if you have it, we're going to be doing it. The dimensions. Now, again, this is where we took the original bed mm -hmm. and downsized it. But we did it in such a manner as to maintain the bulk and to maintain the look of the bed. So that you really, that no detail was lost. The proportions. You, you proportionally did everything. That took, that took some work. And I think it came out beautiful. So now it's up to us. <laughs> well, good teamwork. Thank work. you again. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What a wonderful collaboration. This is just, this is just marvelous. Uh, by the a way, pleasure. a good friend of, of yours said to say hello. That. Roy Underhill. Oh yeah, love Roy. <laughs> what a great guy. He he, he is absolutely he is absolutely super. He he really is, and, qu and quite a gentleman. Yeah. Yeah, quite quite so. Okay, guys, we're gonna we're gonna go eat some oysters, right, Mary? <laughs> I think I'll watch. <laughs> And I can't get I can't get Crystal, I can't get Mary to no. eat an oyster. It's a texture thing. Not raw. No. No. She Crystal thing. said the same thing. It's it's a texture thing, that's okay? True. Well that's why some people sprinkle a little bit of crackers on them. Yeah. You just gotta learn. You, can't you just gotta it. learn to get that slide thing down. And it's good. <laughs> it's good, you know. So it's all for oysters, horseradish, and a little cocktail sauce. And uh, one of the things Roy was proud of was he had a bar at the back of the shop. <laughs> <laughs>
had, la things. had lunch there. The food was pretty good. Okay. We'll catch you later. Okay, guys, I want to show you a little something. I'm still at Mary. This is a little Chippendale mirror of sorts. And you notice you got all the fretwork and, and whatever along the outside. But I want you to notice is how these are attached. This is one method of doing it where it's grooved and cut in here. And the reason I'm just kind of showing you this, I think in the show, we're going to do a Chippendale mirror. They're pretty interesting to do. You've got your scroll work and you've got all the design and frou-frou of it. I'll be so, sure to provide dimensions needed for that. I thought that might be the case. <laughs> Probably need one over low boy. I think it would be gorgeous there. I think it would too. Okay, so I just wanted to show you the small one that's at Mary's. So you wet your whistle and we'll get to it. See you later. Okay guys, we're at the Joseph Manigault. Manigault House in Charleston, South Carolina. We're right across from the Charleston Museum. And according to Mary May and these folks, there's supposed to be an original rice bed here. And so we started a tour in just a few minutes and so we're gonna see what we can get. So hang tight and we'll go on a tour. Sometimes it would have had netting for insects. Also, the headboards are in all, basically every bed, no matter what style, the headboard comes off. Mm -hmm. uh, and the pur that purpose is, again, for circulation. At bedtime, they would have moved the beds in the middle of the rooms. Like every night and every morning, they would have moved the furniture? Right. right. Oh, well, in, in the summertime. Right, just for the circulation. There's all sorts of inlay up there. Yeah, and what they're doing, Crystal, the inlay is missing from right here. Mm-hmm. Okay? Because the bed bolts are in behind that. And somebody's replacing the little raised panel. But that would have been a satin wood inlay in that. This is a single leaf, meaning right here, this is a single leaf. Oh, you can yeah, see huh? the others that have a dual leaf. Yeah, the headboard and is so plain. Yes, the, the two foot posts. That's, and that's because it was all covered in fabric. And you can see around this edge where some type of molding or something was attached to allow I was with a while to attach the fabric. Mm -hmm. Okay. You want to film a little bit? Mm -hmm. I want to film this. Get right in for sure. So I'll show them. Okay, I'll talk. Go ahead. Tell our friend about the bed. Okay. Here we are. Here's an original Charleston rice bed. A couple things to take note of. This is what's called a single leaf, and that's because this collar, as we would refer to, is single. Okay, the one we're also looking at is a dual. But you notice the teaster on top, or canopy as you would refer to it. Now this would have had fabric all the way around it. And you can see there's an area here that's grooved out that some type of molding or provision was used. It looks like it was just kind of like a chair upholstery or something. It was probably lifted up, nailed on with a strip of wood and let down, whatever. And it would have had uh, fabric around the bottom. And as our guy was just telling us, one of the things they did in the, at night, they would bring the bed out into the middle of the room. In the summer? In the summer. And I guess that was just more airflow. Yep, and remove the headboard too. And the headboard in this, this is mahogany. 
the headboard in it is heart pine. Yeah, those pines are secondary to wood in this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, head, the headboard, all the pillows and all the whatever, they didn't use a primary wood because it wasn't saying much. Yeah, I, mean, I just blows my mind that that was the attitude of the day as well. And of course, the rear post in this thing are just, you know, sometimes you see them that they're eight sided. Yeah, these are just a four sided post. And that's just a four sided post, yeah, exactly. That little hook's back behind you. See, when it, when it had um, fabric on it, it was that would have hit, been hidden. Mm -hmm. And also, this was supposed to have a system of pulleys at some place to draw the curls. Okay. Um, now, I don't know if y'all heard that. She said this supposedly had a pulley system that would draw the curtains all the way around. Because, again, insects and whatever, and you know, if you've never been to Charleston, South Carolina in the summer, uh, <laughs> yeah. there's a mosquito or two down here. I heard a rumor about that once. Okay guys, they're not gonna let us film inside again, but we're at Middleton Place. Uh, I got some postcards and we'll take pictures of them, but they've got another Charleston rice bed here. So, we'll see what we can come up with, okay? Uh, the biggest issue they have with filming inside is they don't want flash, because flash produces a UV light and they don't want it to deteriorate and so forth and so on. But look at this big old live oak. You think the one over at Boone Hall was big? I'd like to know how old that thing is, but it's been around a while. Okay. I guess we'll go in and see what's going on. 